my kids are not sleeping yet, by the way. <laughs> All right, we are getting live. Yep, I see us. Okay, it says that you're live now. But I don't, oh wait, it's coming on. And you And I would just turn the, there's gonna yeah, be a lag, so. Us. Okay, so I, now is that my volume on my phone I have to turn off? Okay. Yes. Okay, the volume on my phone is off. I can see us. And Jennifer is watching us. Hi, Jennifer. Hello, Jennifer. <laughs> I am just going, I'm gonna bring this big screen so I can see the comments. Okay. Okay. Awesome. So let's see. Um, Jennifer is on. Jennifer, can you hear us? Can you see us? Okay. You'll be our, um, a tester, our tester. I see us on the phone too. I'm just looking. Right. I want to see if she comments, if I can right. see it on the computer too. Jennifer, if you can hear us well and can see us fine, would you put into the comments that all is good? I'll put this here so I can see that too. Duh, I can just do a test on my phone. Test. I see the test popped up in the comment box. I see it. We're good. Right. How, how can we tell if everybody can hear us okay? Oh, Jennifer Elizabeth is watching. Well, we've got two Jennifers uh, on the line. Oh, yeah. Hi, Jennifer. You were on my to-do list to email tonight, too, to follow up. Can you hear us? Can you guys hear us? <clears throat> If somebody could just tap right into the comment box. Yeah, show, us some, show us some love, hearts or thumbs <laughs> that you can hear us. I wonder if I should try and come out of my headphones and see if that helps. I'm not getting feedback that we are being heard. I heard us on my computer, so we should be okay. Okay. Let me see. Say something. Hello. Hello. <laughs> no, I'm talking about, unplug your computer. Okay, can you hear me on the Facebook Live page? No. Tell me if you can hear me now. Can you hear me okay now? I. Uh, now I hear us. Tell me if you can hear me now. Can you guys hear us? Can you hear me okay now? Yeah. I, I, problem is I'm getting an echo, so do I need to now take this? No, it's my sound, probably. I just turned it off. Yes, Jennifer can hear us. Okay. So I think Unless, I need to... I don't think we need the headphones, I guess. Yeah, I think the headphones are actually blocking the sound. Okay. Cool. Awesome. Bye-bye headphones. Awesome sauce. Awesome sauce. Okay, great. So let's, um, it's 8.02. I am, we've got everything set up. Hello, hello, hello. Good evening, everybody. Happy Tuesday. It's my dear friend, Ellen Goldman, and you guys know me, Suzanne Vernachek. We are so excited to kick off tonight for the Ignite Your Life group. I mean, we'll, really, it's Discover Your Power, Ignite Your Life, and Master Your Inner Game. This special training where we are collaborating and combining forces so that we can really serve you guys on, on, on another level. And you've got two amazing minds. And, um, you know, Ellen and I go way back. Ellen was actually one of my very, very, very first, if not like, literally, I think number one, first contributor for Identity Magazine when I started in 2006. And she is one of the experts in my first book, 
and she's also always contributing to the magazine. And we've just grown to have this amazing friendship and business relationship and a personal friendship relationship. And um, we decided to join forces. And so I'm so excited because over the next two weeks, her and I are going to be sharing all of our secrets and tips and knowledge, expertise that we have studied over, over for me, over a decade, for you, a couple, 20 years, right? Like, she, Ellen is, is very knowledgeable. And we are going to start off tonight with her special formula map, and I'll let her describe and explain that, obviously. Then we're going to have a lot of live Q&As for you guys over the next week and a half. And then next week, I'm going to dive in and share with you get all A's and how I that special signature formula that I've created over the years. And so tonight I'm gonna let Ellen just dive right in because we know that your time is precious and we want to get to the good stuff. And as always this stuff will be recorded and left on this page. So if you can pop in and say hi, you can share your questions. Um it's gonna be here for you. All right. Thank you, thank you, Susan. It is so exciting to be here, um, getting to meet some of your community and hopefully a bunch of people from my community are gonna mm -hmm. join on. And uh, you know, Susan, it's amazing to me that we've never thought about doing a collaboration together. I know. We have spent so much time brainstorming and watching both of our businesses grow and evolve and change over the years. And so although, um, we've been kind of going separate roads in terms of what we're doing with our businesses. There's been so much overlap. Mm -hmm. And it's always been a joy for me to write to uh, the articles that I contributed and the Q&As to the Identity Magazine because I know that your community is very similar and has a very similar belief system to those that have been following me. And so, oh, and I see Paul just joined in. Thank you, Paul, is yeah, from my Jenny, community. Paul, Right, so we've got people that are going to be jumping on, but um, I, I, yep, I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time talking about my background. I mean, you can go to my website and read my bios and all, but yeah, as Susan said, I've been in what I consider the personal development, health and wellness industry, self-development for 20 plus, plus, plus years. I don't even like to say the number because then you'll do the math and you'll start figuring out my age. So I'm not, I'm not even gonna go there. Um, but what we're gonna be talking about over the next two weeks and what we're gonna start with this evening is this journey that people take when they want to go through um, behavioral change, when they have a goal or an aspiration or something that they want to accomplish. What I've seen over the many, many years that I've been working with people first in the fitness industry, and then when I evolved into the coaching industry and the wellness coaching industry, is that there's a pattern that has to emerge. There's a, a, almost a roadmap that people have to go through in order to really reach sustained change. I'm not talking about a short-term change where you start doing something a little bit differently and then suddenly, you know, you're there, 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 and then you go right back to where you started from. Really sustained permanent change takes a much different pathway. The problem is when somebody comes up with whatever the thing they want to do differently, whether it's weight loss, whether it's change their relationship, manage their stress better, um, find more meaningful work. It really doesn't matter what it is that they're looking to do. The kind of knee-jerk reaction is, I'm just going to get into action. I really want to do this. I'm really motivated. I'm going to do this now. And we jump into action. The problem with that is there hasn't been a foundation for success to be built. Because along with the action we're trying to jump into, we're bringing our old self and our old behaviors and our old habits. Mm -hmm. And so what we're gonna talk about is this map, this behavioral change map that people need to go through in order to reach sustained change in any area of their life. 
So I'm going to briefly tonight, I'm just going to give you a very overview of what the whole map is. But tonight, we're really going to focus on the first part of it, the M in this acronym, which is mindset and motivation. The A is awareness and action. And the P is preparation and planning. And these foundational pieces, almost like a roadblock that you have to put one on top of the other, builds the foundation for permanent change and sustained change. And that I really believe is what most people are looking for. They're really looking to find a pathway that will get them there and keep them there on whatever the developmental stage of what they're looking for. So let's talk about mindset. Now, when we decide we want to do things differently, or we have a goal or an aspiration that we want to achieve, whether we're aware of it or not, we bring a certain mindset to the table, a certain amount of beliefs about that change. So let's just, for, for argument's sake, let's use weight loss, because it's one that most people at some point or another decide they want to take off five pounds or 50 pounds, it doesn't matter, but they go into this idea around weight loss. So some of the things that I usually find in terms of the mindset around weight loss is that, number one, it's not going to be fun. <laughs> it's going to be deprivation. I'm going to be walking around hungry. And this is going to kind of be a drag. Mm. And I need to find a diet to go on a program that's going to be the magic bullet that's going to finally get me what I want. That mindset is actually one that works against you. And I'm not going to go into tonight why, but um, it, it implies that there's a way to do this and it's the only way to do it. And very often we come to a whole bunch of stuff you know, people bring mindsets about money, how much it's possible to make, why they can't make more. People bring mindset about their relationships. I want a better relationship, but my significant other is like this. Mm -hmm. And all those mindsets are kind of mucky, messy stuff that really don't lead to success. So the first step is to really take a look at what is the mindset I need to be entering into this new journey that's gonna get me where I wanna go. I so that. mindset becomes very tied to first a vision of if things really were the way you wanted them to be, how would they look? And the visioning process is one that most people just kind of skip over. Right. They think it's not, I get it all the time too. They, they think it's a waste of time. It's the secret. The, it's the secret component. Yep. It is. It is. It is that piece that becomes the destination mm -hmm. at the end of that roadmap. You know, the map is leading you to some place, but first you need to start thinking about what is it really going to look like and how is it going to fit in to who I am, my values, and what's important to me. And sometimes it means suspending ideas that we have around that journey. You know, so for again, for something like weight loss, it's really important to change that from, oh, this is gonna be this really hard and difficult thing to, hmm, I'm gonna be curious about some new ways to try things that could actually be really exciting and really fun. And so that piece has to be done first. And I know you and your course dive a lot into the mindset piece and, and you know, what are we bringing to the table and is the, the way we're thinking about these changes, are the way we're thinking about our goals, yes. are they a way that's going to help us or hinder us? Mm, you know? It's like the old... Um, expression, whether you think you can, or you think you can't, you're correct. Right. 
And so very often what I see in the behavioral change journey is that people come to the table with a little whisper in the back of the voice that's saying, you're probably not going to be successful. They're not even aware it's there, but it kind of is there. And it's almost becomes that self-fulfilling prophecy. Mm. So we need to clear that away. May I add to that too? Yeah, you bet. I love that because, I mean, you're so right. Ellen is so right. You talked about like the vision and how many people skip over that. And what I love to push others to do is the, is the why, which is very connected to the same thing, like your vision. But this, you're, you're talking about the foundation piece, which is right in line with your why. So if you have any of these goals, right, you've got to sit down and really be connected with your why. You've got to, I highly, highly encourage my students, my clients, my customers, to clo- literally close your eyes. And what is the why? Like, why? Why five pounds? Why 10 pounds? Because we've got to scratch that surface. It's not just about the number. You've got to scratch that surface. Why more income? Why a different career? Why better communication in your relationship? So you break that, you scratch that surface, you break through that layer, and then you've got to actually vision, envision, the impact it's gonna have when you reach it. Right. And who, it's not just gonna impact you, who, what, when, how, like, you've got to do that work. Otherwise you're never gonna be connected and have that like that breakthrough. You gotta scratch that surface. And I love how you, you talk about that. That's like the foundation work. So like we encourage you, even tonight after, after Ellen's done sharing, like. Close your eyes. When you're laying in bed with your head on the pillow, practice. Close your eyes and connect to your why and then connect to, the, to the, that, that view, that vision of you succeeding and how that impacts who, what, when, how. Like that full on and the more you practice, the stronger it gets, right? And the easier it gets and the more connected you get. And yeah, yeah. well, that is exactly why mindset is connected to motivation. That's why the M is mindset and motivation because they really do walk hand in hand. Yes. First, you've got to get into the success mindset, that piece of believing like, you know what? I'm ready for change. I'm ready to do things differently. The way I've been doing it, because we all are as results of our daily actions and our daily habits. What's Mm -hmm. standing right in front of us, the person we are, we are today is the result of all the actions cumulatively up until now. And many of them have been fantastic. Those are our strengths that we're bringing to the table. It's the beautiful part of us that makes us individuals. Mm -hmm. So we need to take those strengths, those great parts of us and put that mindset of, you know what? The way I've been doing things up until now in this particular area doesn't mean my whole life just means this particular area where I want change, the way I've been doing things hasn't been working. It's no longer serving me. So I'm going to change my mind and do things differently. And once you begin to get that, that mindset of success, visioning, affirmations, I think affirmations in terms of mindset are super important. That ability to wake up all day long. Yeah. (laughs) Wake up in the morning and say, you know what? Today, I'm going to take action to get where I want to go. And then once you're in that right mindset place, that's when the work has to be around that motivation. Mm -hmm. Really understanding the why, the deepest why, your core being of what it is that's so important to you that you will now say, this is a non-negotiable for me. I'm no that. longer willing to continue to do things the way that I was doing, or I'm no longer to, I'm no longer going to not do things this way because I want this so badly. It's so important. I truly believe the benefits 
of getting what I want will far exceed the work because let's face it, behavioral change is work. And you know, I tell it like it is. And in my community that's here, they know I'm not the one who's gonna say this is gonna be always easy. Yeah. But it can be fun. Yeah. Just because working hard at something that you want and something that you know and believe in your heart will benefit you and make your life better. Although it may feel like hard work, it's work you look forward to and you can enjoy and you can really get excited about because you'll start to see the results. Yeah, and you don't have to do it alone. Exactly, well, support is a huge part of it. Yes. Absolutely, in anything we do, in any change, we, none of us really work well in a vacuum. Mm -hmm. We're social beings, even the, the, the greatest introverts are still social beings, you know. You and I, Susan, we're the extroverts out of the world, you know. We're out there and we're loud and we're embracing people and all, but that doesn't mean that our need for social connection is any more than the quiet extroverts of the world. I mean, it's our introverts of the world. So right. social connection is huge. Super, I super it. I love it. important. We've got, I've got, if you, if you want to take like a little question. Yeah. And we'll do a lot of Q and A's at the end too, um, got, uh, folks. Paul, do you arrive at the non-negotiable after a series of thinking, I want this badly? Let me take that again. So do you arrive at the non-negotiable? After a series of thinking, I want this badly. Yeah, yeah. I think that you do arrive at, First, it has to be the deep mind work. Mm -hmm. you know, I do an exercise with my clients, and Paul, you probably remember this, that I call peel the onion, where, you know, fill in the blank. I want, fill in the blank, doesn't matter. I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to earn more money. I want to improve my relationship so I'm having more fun, whatever it is. And then you have to ask yourself, why? And usually what happens is most people can come up with, you know, two or three reasons pretty quickly. Boom, boom, boom. I want this because, da, 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 da. you know, and then it's like, okay, but why is that important? So I tell my students, they need to have about 15 peel the onion reasons. And you'll know when it's non-negotiable, when suddenly you get this kind of feeling in your stomach this, oh my gosh, or the hairs on the back of your neck almost stand up and it almost brings tears to your eyes where, yeah, that is my reason why. It doesn't have to be relevant or important to anybody but you. And when that happens, when you feel that way, then it starts to become a non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. What actually happens is staying the way things are becomes more uncomfortable mm -hmm. than working at the change. Mm -hmm. And that's when it comes a non-negotiable. Enough is enough. Yeah. When enough but, is enough. But as human beings, it's really easy for us to kind of sit back on a day we had a lousy night's sleep, or maybe we, you know, I don't know, had got stuck in a terrible traffic jam, we're super busy with circumstances going on. It's really easy to kind of like forget your why and kind of have the excuses like, well, I, I know I really want to do this, but this is the reason why I can't today, so I'll just do it tomorrow. If you have a way to keep your mindset and motivation in the forefront all the time. So, you know, to give you an example, on a day when I plan to do a workout and something's going kind of awry and maybe some stressful situations are occurring or I had a lousy night's sleep and there's a thought around, oh, I don't really want to do this today. And, and sometimes we're going to feel like that. You know, I really don't want to. I put a pause button and I think about it and, and I remind myself, okay, 
Why is it important for you to do this workout? How do you feel usually after you get through it? Mm -hmm. In what way is that gonna actually help you feel better for the rest of the day? So I go through a little bit around my whys for continually have, having working out be an ongoing part of my life. So I know how to remind myself of those whys. And so, yeah, at this point for me, working out on a regular basis is a non-negotiable. Now that doesn't mean I don't occasionally skip a day if something happens, but there's, there's never a doubt in my mind like, oh, just because I skipped a day or even a couple of days in a row that I'm not gonna get back to it. Because being a lifetime exerciser is a non-negotiable in my life. Can I add on that? You bet. Okay, so I want to share real quickly, Paul, a story of how I came up with a non-negotiable. And this also has to be around fitness. So those, from me, those who know me in this community, two years ago, I suffered from a, a severe lower back injury. It was so bad, I couldn't put my pants on put them on or take them off. My husband had to do it. There's a whole story behind how I got started, why I got started, went to physical therapy, started working out again, and all that kind of stuff. I right? took those steps and you'll learn more about me when I talk next week and throughout the next few weeks. But now I'm in my third year of healing and feeling phenomenal because I did the small steps to get to now where I can lift 15 pounds, where before I couldn't lift any weights. I noticed a pattern because I practice and, you know, Ellen and I, we have our own coaches and we're learning all the time. We're at doing the education. And so our mindset is obviously always working. And I noticed that over the last few years, when I first started, when I missed three days in a row, it was downhill. And I noticed this because I was paying attention to my improvements and I was paying attention to my lifestyle and learning to implement new tools and strategies and systems and all that kind of stuff. So I was paying attention to my patterns and my triggers. And so sometimes when we, that's where you, where you catch triggers that will put into place like a non-negotiable. And for me, Every time I missed three days of working on a row, it ended up being four, five, six, and I would like fall off the wagon. So I put in a non-negotiable, I will not miss more than two days in a row of being active, whether that's walking or whatever, I will not miss more than two days in a row of being active. And that was my non-negotiable and it's been one year since I put that in place. Susan, that's such a great story and, and thanks for sharing that because I do yeah really helpful and what you actually did which is so great you moved us right into what we're going to talk about tomorrow night which is awareness mm. so you have this mindset around i'm going to become an exerciser i want you know i want this back pain gone i don't want to deal with this anymore and i know that if i stay active that i can heal myself and do really well so you had your reasons why mm -hmm. you got into the mindset of understanding what you needed to do. You got the education around how to do it properly so you wouldn't hurt yourself. That's all mm -hmm. part of mindset. Mm -hmm. But you had made up your mind, I'm going to do this now. I'm going to become a, lifestyle, a lifetime exerciser. My reasons why are this. And then you actually, whether you recognized it or not, you went into that very next step, which was you became aware. You became aware of your triggers. Mm -hmm. and you became aware of what works and what works for you is not letting more than two days go by without right. a workout or without being active right so you you're actually helping and showing how all of this kind of works hand in hand yeah but see most people if they make a decision like you know what i want to start exercising and they run out and they join a gym and they buy fancy clothing and they get <laughs> you know, hundred dollar pair of sneakers and they go about three or four or five, maybe even times. And then some life comes up and they skip or whatever. And then, you know, six months later, they're like, Oh my God, I spent all this money on the health club and all this money. And I, I didn't do it. And then it feeds into their mindset. Like, yeah, that's not who I am. And so the next time they try, they bring that same kind of 
I'm really not a person who exercises. I'm going to try again. So it all kind of works together. You got mm-hmm. to build the proper mindset. You've got to know exactly why it's important for you. You've got to reach that point where it is more uncomfortable. The thought of staying where you are is way more uncomfortable than the discomfort of going mm-hmm. through the change. And then it becomes a non-negotiable. Yes, exactly. I love it. I love I it. I hope that answered the question for Paul. And you know what? I can't see to see the I'll get here. So is there any other questions at this point? Paul says, great story. I have missed many days due to extra company in the home, just barely holding my own on, not gaining weight. I can relate to making a limit for non-negotiable exercise. So, you know, I know what I would say to him, but this is, I want you to, this is your night. I want you to, um, if you have anything for him for that, when you have guests in your home. Yeah, so, so here's the awareness piece on that. If you know that when you have companies staying in your house, staying active or getting to the gym or whatever you like to do for your exercise becomes challenging, you work on strategizing before that actually occurs. And a big part of coaching becomes challenging. Oops. You work on strategizing the sound came on. No worries. Sorry. Okay. Um, so you want to strategize around that beforehand. And that's, you know, a great, big, big part in the coaching world and what we teach in our classes is to brainstorm before an obstacle occurs, yes. how are you going to get around it? Mm-hmm. So, you know, maybe that means, well, I might have to get up earlier than my guests to go out to the gym. Maybe. Or invite them. <laughs> Maybe Exactly. Maybe your guests want to join you at the gym. Then you never even thought to ask them. Maybe you want to shift to something like walking outdoors and bring the family out together for a walk. Um, you know, you just kind of brainstorm like this is going to be a challenge. Mm-hmm. And this is how I'm going to get around that challenge. And I'm going to try it and see how it goes. And if you have to course correct, you do. Mm-hmm. You know, interestingly... My family knows, and oh my God, I have sleepover guests all the time. They're coming this weekend again. I mean, my house has been, you know, I always laugh and think it's a bit, I should have called it a bed and breakfast years ago. I mean, which is a beautiful thing to have family and friends that always feel comfortable and wonderful coming to my home. My dream. But they all know that I'm going to get up and do my thing. And if they want to join me, they can And if they don't, that's okay too. And breakfast may be a little bit later because I'm out walking or start eating without me. And everybody just kind of takes it in their stride. I love it. Yeah. I think that's important. I think, you know, and and I'll share more about the get all A's, but the first key word in my get all A's is accept. And I think, you know, the awareness piece that you're talking about is a lot of times like the acceptance, like we have to accept responsibility. We have to accept we're in charge. And this is the first night that Ellen and I are kicking off and she's got some amazing tips and you guys are accepting us. You're accepting this training and you're accepting that there's possibly something that you want to tap into and focus and shift. And so this is your night. So start, start tonight, start owning it, start taking control, start taking power start implementing. Yeah, it's a great idea because that, that really is important to start doing this work. Um, and there's so many different ways that you can do it. And everybody's got their kind of unique style. You know, for some people, it might be journaling. For others, it might be meditating. For others, it might be, um, I need to sit down with a really close friend who I feel super comfortable, who I trust has my best interests at heart, and actually verbalizing out loud, you know, I'm thinking about making this change. I want to start doing something differently. Mm-hmm. You know, here are the things about it that worry me. And, and you can actually do this on your own with paper. You know, the change I want to make is fill in the blank. When I think about doing this, I fill in the blank. Mm-hmm. And you'd be so surprised at what comes out. You know, I get excited. I get scared. 
I worry that I won't be able to do it. You know, that's the whole mindset piece. And yeah. just keep talking about it. The reason that this change would be beneficial for me is if I don't make this change, here's what worries me. So mm -hmm. whether you're doing this on paper, whether you're doing it with a friend, whether you're doing it with a coach, that piece of it has to be done. It's just work that if it's not done, there's no strong foundation. And then when circumstances come about and the going gets tough, and mm -hmm. it will, mm -hmm. because life is messy. Yep. Life is complicated. We do not know what tomorrow brings. You know, the best right. thing plans. Right. So we need to have that foundation. So when it does get kind of messy, we can manage it. And it doesn't mean we forget about it. So yeah. once the mindset is there and the motivation is the core motivation, you know, seldom have I met anybody who's sustained really long weight loss. If they tell me that their reason to want to lose weight is to fit back into a different size clothing. Yes, that could be something that's very important to you, but it's probably not deep enough. You know, then you've got to say, well, why? Why is it important for you to fit into that smaller size clothing? You know, well, when I do, I feel better about myself. And why is it important for you to feel better about yourself? Mm -hmm. that's peeling the yes the motivation yeah. key reasons why yep and this can this can be applied to every area of your life you Absolutely. know every area of your life why do you want a new career why do you want better communication you know why 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 and i know for me better communication for, with my husband because when we first started dating it wasn't good the communication because i was not as confident. I was not as, um, I didn't, I didn't believe in my thoughts and my opinions in the relationship when we first started dating. Right. I wanted better communication because we're married and I have a voice and I am, you know, very worthy and valuable. And I'm half of this relationship, you know, career. Why do you want a better career? Why do you want that promotion? What does that mean on so many layers? It's, it's every area of your life. You know, start somewhere with all of these questions and, and apply it to, to everything so that you can up your game day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year, because there is no destination. It's a beautiful journey. <laughs> Absolutely. I wanted to add something, but before I do, because I can't seem to, to see the chat here on my phone, I've been trying to pull into the so face far we're good with the comments we're okay no there. questions or anything yeah if there's any questions guys just post them I'm, I'm scrolling to look okay so one question that came into me via email because there was somebody who wasn't going to be able to be with us tonight and i really wanted to make sure that i address this awesome. is um how do you hold on to your motivation like even when you're very very clear that this is your reason why how do you kind of when you're having a bad day, how do you hold on to it? How do you keep it in the forefront of your mind? And so we talked a little bit about that already and that, you know, I actually believe that sometimes it's worth having your reasons why written down and having them in a place where you can actually, when you're having kind of a vulnerable moment or day, you know, put it on an index card and keep it in your wallet and pull it out. You know, my reason why, read it. I think visualizing, um, having um, imaging is really, really important. And I know my community has heard me talk about this, but you know, I have two images, photographs that I use personally that kind of catapult me, not just for exercise, but to make sure that I'm really living a healthy lifestyle. Mm -hmm. You know, and one of them is a picture of my husband and I on a vacation several years ago when we hiked to the top of the mountain. And I love that picture. It was after this really hard hike and we're at the top of the mountain and we're both sweaty. I mean, it's definitely not our best photographic moment for sure, but we both have these huge smiles on our faces and this gorgeous scenery behind us. 
And when I look at that and I say, I want to live the healthiest lifestyle I can live. I want to be in charge of my health to the best of my ability because I always want to be able to climb mountains. And all I have to do is take a look at that picture and it will help get me going. The other thing about motivation though is there's this really funny piece of motivation that most people think. They have to be motivated before they go into action. There's no place, and you'll relate to this because you do writing as well, but as an author and a writer and a blogger, if I sat around and waited for motivation and inspiration, yeah. I would have a lot of empty blank pages. I would never have gotten my book written, and you know you probably wouldn't have gotten yours done. The funny thing is that's when discipline comes into play. Mm -hmm. You need to be deeply motivated inside to get the changes, but then you need discipline to implement. And sometimes by being disciplined and, you know, Nike said it great, just do it. Mm -hmm. That actually increases your motivation. Mm -hmm. So I will find sometimes with myself and many of my clients, when they are struggling, if you can just say, you know what, I'm just going to force myself to do this. You know, whether for writing, it's like, okay, I'm going to block out and I'm just going to write for 30 minutes. I don't care if it's crapola. <laughs> you know, I'm just going to keep writing. I'm not going to edit. I'm just going to, and suddenly you kind of get into this flow and you become motivated to do more. Yep. Sometimes, if you're really struggling, don't let a lack of motivation in the moment become an excuse to not move forward. I love it. I love it. I talk about that all the time too. The motivation and habits, and and I'll dive into that too with you know next week. But it's it's huge. Like we we. I will always say, use whatever you can to get motivated, right? Yeah. But you've got to find the, what's going to sustain you. You've got to, then you go into the discipline, you go into the habits, and then you start getting the results. And those results are what's ultimately going to keep you motivated. Yeah. But you don't get those results unless you're disciplined and you've got the habits. And but take, use whatever motivation you've got to absolutely. ignite it, to start it. And, and then you know, lots of fun tools there's tools and techniques you know and listen i have numerous adults and you know we'll laugh at ourselves who say you know what i love putting a star on my calendar you know for every day that i you know ate five vegetables did my writing sent a resume out to for a new job whatever whatever they're working on Adults who like love looking at the old fashioned paper calendar mm -hmm. filled with stars and it motivates them. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. Why not? Yeah. Some people are motivated sharing their successes. You mm -hmm. know, I've seen, I'm sure you've seen it too. People who go on Facebook and they say, I've decided that, you know, I'm going to do this for 30 days straight and I'm going to report in. Now, that's not my style. I would never do that. I'm going to challenge you. <laughs> <laughs> but for, you know, for somebody else it is. But, but yeah. the, those are all tools. They're techniques. They can help. But until you have the core, deep reason why, and on a daily basis, you remind yourself of that core, deep meaning yes. and reason why. And on a daily basis... You have the mindset that says, I am going to succeed. And if I have a crack in the road, I'm going to find a way to go to a different road or pave it, but mm -hmm. I'm going to succeed. Take off the timeline pressures. You know, sometimes things will take longer than mm -hmm. you want them to take, which is why yeah. it's so important to also celebrate the baby steps, which will keep you motivated too. You know, I'm all for saying, hey, I did this today. Mm -hmm. Today, I got it done. Mm -hmm. I'll take care of tomorrow, tomorrow. I love it. 
Everybody here is loving it. The comments are great. Lots of hearts, lots of likes. Paul, he agrees. He's getting it. He sees lots of value, especially in doing what's on his daily to-do list. You know, um, Martha, I have a picture of a little engine that could, that motivates me to keep I moving forward my goals. I love that, Martha. <laughs> I love it. Great job, guys. Share. Please feel free to share in the comments all of your tips and tricks and resources that you use because you never know who's going to watch the replay. You never know. This, this community is for all of us. You know, Ellen and I, yes, are leading this training, but you guys, you folks could learn from each other. And um, we learn or, from you. Yeah, we learn from you too. Hearing what, what works for you, it, it, it helps everybody. Everybody will benefit. So please know that this is a safe, environment and um you guys can share anytime <laughs> i'm looking over here because the comments are over here right i know i know so if anybody we're at 8 45 um we know that your time is precious if you guys have any questions right now that you want answered we can spend some like five more minutes answering questions if not please also know that you can ask the questions um ongoing because Ellen and I will be checking checking in. So even if you get this, those of you watching the replay tomorrow, feel free, just post away. We've got our notifications on. We are here for the next few weeks to serve you and for you to get to know us and what we're about and how we love to teach and um, and serve, serve all of you. So, so don't hold back. Paul, once I am in the gym and taking my walk around the park, I feel so motivated and joyful. Absolutely. And always make sure that you kind of check in on that feeling, you know, mm. express that feeling, especially if you can express it out loud, you know, yeah. even be able to go home and share it with the people in your home saying, boy, I just got back from the gym and I feel so alive and so good. Just hearing yourself say mm. it out loud will continue to motivate you. So true. It's so true. If, if anybody knew what went on in here all day long, it's, it's craziness. It's like mind chaos, but it's so important because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, you have us and we're going to share everything we can with you. But at the end of the day, it's your heart, it's your soul, it's your mind, it's your thoughts, it's your beliefs. And you, at the end of the day, are responsible. And you've got to learn to self-motivate, whatever that, however that looks, whatever that looks like. Okay. So, all right. So I don't see any questions as of right now. Um, there's still seven of you on here. Um, I guess, you know, tomorrow, what, tomorrow is about awareness. Awareness and action. Yep. Awareness and action. About how you start to become really aware of the habits you have that are not only standing in your way, but the ones that are helping you and how you can utilize that. Mm -hmm. And then how to start making decisions around action. When you, when you start, your mindset is ready to go. You know your motivators. You've gotten a pretty good clarity around, you know, what's going to work for you, what doesn't work for you, what your triggers are, they, all that kind of awareness about you, which is really, I think, a really fun piece. I think it's being a personal detective on you. And then when you have that information, the action is not necessarily, okay, today I start doing this. It's making decisions around mm -hmm. what are your first best steps. Yes. And that's what we're going to dive into tomorrow. So I we'll love it. I cannot wait. I cannot everybody wait. Everybody will join us back here tomorrow evening and even more of the crowds will come in. Tomorrow, 8 p.m. Eastern time. Yes, I'm seeing action is my Achilles heel. heel, heel. <laughs> yeah, action. Action is like, action is the secret sauce. Um, getting past the fear. We'll talk about that over the next few days. We're going to talk a lot about action and fear. You know, fear, it really comes down in, in my work, and I'm sure you can relate because I know you talk about this too. Fear, we can break down to thoughts versus facts. And when you, when you really um, say hello to fear, right? Who was that? Elizabeth Gilbert, who says, you know, hi, fear. Thanks for showing up. Let's break it down. 
Um, I usually say, well, is it a thought? Is it a fact? What's going on? Is it a belief? Is it a fact? And it usually, usually always goes back to a, a thought, a self-limiting belief, which we can correct. And we'll show you over the next few, few um, days when we're with you guys, some tools and tips on, on, on how to shift that. But thank you guys so much for sharing. Um, they're saying excellent work, Ellen. Good job, Ellen. This is awesome yeah. stuff. Tomorrow, eight o'clock, be here. We'll see you, invite, tell anybody you know that will want to learn about the roadmap and get all A's in the game of life and bring them, you know, more the merrier and um, questions, just feel free to post them and, and you guys, we're here for you. So don't hold back. And thank you so much for spending your time with us. Our pleasure. Good night, all. Have a wonderful evening. Hope to see you back tomorrow. And thank you so much for all your attention. Awesome. Awesome stuff, Ellen. All right. We'll see you tomorrow. Okie dokie. I don't know why my computer does that. You want to stop the clavicle?